Hello everybody. Let's begin with where we left in the previous class. We were discussing satellite system parameters in the previous class. Satellite system parameters describe the functions and operations of the remote sensing systems. And as I mentioned, satellite system parameters are grouped into two categories, instrumental parameters and weaving parameters. In today's class, we will discuss on weaving parameters. As the name indicates, weaving parameters decide how the earth is viewed from above. This essentially depends on the orbit details. Orbit details in terms of altitude and the satellite's orientation and rotation relative to the earth's movement. Now satellites used for remote sensing are generally of two types geostationary or geosynchronous satellites and polar orbiting and sun synchronous satellites. Let's see these one by one. Geostationary satellites as the name indicates are stationary that means they maintain a fixed location above the surface of the earth with respect to the earth surface. Now a geostationary earth orbit is a circular orbit as you can see in this figure here and the orbit is at a height of 36,000 kilometers above the earth's equator and the, the movement of the satellite follows the direction of the earth's rotation. Geostationary satellites are placed in orbit in such a manner that these satellites have an orbital period equal to the earth's rotational period. And that's why these, these satellites appear motionless at a fixed position in the sky to the ground observers. Examples of geostationary satellites include uh, satellites uh, in orbit for communication and uh, weather monitoring. Uh, for example, all INSAT uh, and GSAT series of uh, Indian Space Research Organization our communication and weather satellites. These provide services to telecommunications, television broadcasting, satellite news gathering, weather forecasting, disaster warning and search and rescue operations. And one such uh, in the GSAT series is ISRO's uh, GSAT-16. This is the 24th geostationary communication satellite uh, of ISRO uh, positioned at 55 degrees east longitude about uh, 36,000 uh, kilometers in the geostationary orbit and this is the latest uh, uh, satellite that was launched I think on um, 7th December uh, 2014. Now coming to polar orbiting and sun synchronous satellites, the altitude, orbit altitude of these polar orbiting satellites unlike uh, geostationary satellites which are at a higher altitude of around 36,000, these polar orbiting satellites are placed a few hundred to a few thousand kilometers above. Uh, the range is uh, somewhere um, around um, 600 kilometers to 2000 kilometers. As the name indicates, polar orbiting, these satellites orbit the earth from pole to pole. That is from north pole to south pole in the descending mode and from south to north in the ascending mode. A satellite in a low polar orbit traces out a curving path over the earth's surface. In these satellites, the time at which the satellite revisits a given location is the same on every occasion. Uh, this is particularly useful for visible and infrared observations as the level of solar illumination can be chosen. For example, biological and environmental studies say for example crop monitoring or water quality of lakes, rivers uh, monitoring, uh, these require specific timings for the collection of data. So in case of polar orbiting satellites, the time at which the satellite revisits the same location can be chosen and in sun synchronous that, that time a uh, revisit time will be the same local time every time the satellite visits that particular location. Uh, 
here in this video, you can see. In general, there are two groups of satellites. Those that orbit like this around the equator and those that orbit from pole to pole. Almost all the satellites that orbit from pole to pole are at low altitudes. These photograph and examine the surface for analysis of crops, for weather, or perhaps for military purposes. Each orbit may take, say, about an hour and a half. As they orbit, the Earth is turning beneath them. So over the course of 24 hours, they can examine the whole of the Earth's surface. Satellites at a higher altitude will orbit more slowly because the circumference of the circle is greater and the pull of gravity is smaller. A satellite can be launched and put into orbit above the equator and rotate in the same direction as the Earth. If we calculate the height of orbit very carefully, we can place the satellite in orbit so that it exactly matches the rotation of the Earth. The satellite follows the Earth round, always staying over exactly the same point. This geostationary orbit is essential for communication satellites and for global positioning satellites. We can calculate the matching speed, height and orbit time of every satellite to match its purpose. If the satellite is in stable orbit, then the force of gravity must be exactly equal to that force needed to provide the acceleration to the center for circular motion. So that video gave an idea of how um, the geostationary satellites and, uh, and polar orbiting satellites orbits look like. Now some examples of uh, the polar orbiting uh, satellites or sun synchronous satellites are um, uh, for example ISRO's uh, resource sat 2 which is the 18th remote sensing satellite built by ISRO with a 5 year mission launched on April 20th 2011. This is a sun circular polar sun synchronous orbiting satellite. The orbit inclination is 98.73 degrees plus uh, or minus 0.2 degrees. Orbital period is 101.35 minutes. So it will be roughly a time taken, the time taken to complete one, uh, one uh, orbit or one revolution around the Earth's surface by these satellites is roughly one and a half hours. In, in, so the number of orbits per day would then be around 14. Local time of equator crossing is uh, around 10.30 am and repetitivity is 24 days which means the satellite takes 24 days to come back to the same location on the surface of the earth, any location for that matter. For a given location it takes 24 days to uh, revisit and um, as I mentioned the altitude Orbi orbital altitude of earth observing satellites or polar uh, orbiting satellites uh, is around 600 to 2000 km square. So within that range altitude at which the resource sat 2 is placed is 817 km. These, these satellites uh, polar orbiting satellites uh, with the characteristics of the uh, revisit uh, time uh, which will be the same time every time it, it revisits a particular location this particular characteristics of these polar orbiting satellites are very useful for variety of applications uh, including um, uh, ecosystem mapping understanding weather and climate monitoring and management of natural resources crop production forecast and uh, several agro meteorological services and disaster surveillance for example pest uh, disaster flood disaster or drought so surveying of these horticultural development um, and so on there is uh, this another video i would like to show okay here is another example iconos which is also a synchronous polar uh, satellite uh, which is placed at uh, 681 kilometers above. It also has a 10:30 a.m. solar time as the equator crossing time. Uh, the inclination is 98.1 uh, degrees. Swath, swath is 11.3 kilometers. And I'll show this video, which describes what a swath is. Swath is actually the the path traced by the or the 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 uh, strip 
the track width that is traced by the satellite uh, in every uh, orbit. Well, let's see what I mean exactly here. As you can see, the satellite is a, an example of polar orbiting satellite and as it goes from pole to pole, the earth beneath rotates on its own axis from west to east. So every time it, it makes a um, rota rotation or say revolution, then the earth would have moved a little and every time a different uh, adjacent um, strip of land is scanned. So in that way, the satellite after, after a certain number of days, it covers scanning the entire surface of the earth. So every time it comes back to that same location, say 24 days in case of resource sat, Okay, at the end of 24 days, the resource set would have scanned the entire surface of the earth one time. So, in summary, there are two types of remote sensing satellites, geostationary satellites and polar orbiting and sun synchronous satellites. Geostationary, as the name indicates, they, are, they appear to be stationary uh, for a ground observer, stationary at an uh, in, an, in the orbit because the, the direction of motion and the speed is matched with that of the speed of the rotating earth. Uh, so the geostationary satellites are placed uh, at an altitude of uh, roughly of around 36,000 kilometers and these are very useful for uh, regional weather forecasting, weather monitoring and communication. And these polar orbiting satellites, they go from pole to pole uh, with an inclined orbit and um, placed at an orbital altitude of anywhere between 600 kilometers to 2000 kilometers. And these are uh, the applications of these include uh, applications such as uh, uh, crop monitoring, natural resource uh, monitoring and management because these uh, scan and give the information about the entire surface of the earth. 